Yo, what's up? Moki here. Did Respawn Shadow Nerf movement in Season 12? That is a big looming question right now. And I'm not the only one asking it. I see discussions about it on Twitter, in my YouTube comments, in different Twitch chats and in our movement subreddit Apex Rollouts. So I wanted to take it upon myself to use methods like combing through game fights or using modded Apex to recreate movement scenarios to investigate as much as possible if movement was changed and Respawn didn't tell us about. What I wanted to make sure someone did tell you about is today's sponsor, Buff. Buff is an app that lets you earn rewards simply by playing your favorite games like Apex Legends, CSGO, Splitgate and many more. It is based on the Overwolf platform, which I really like accepting sponsorships for, since Overwolf is officially supported and approved by the game publishers. And the Overwolf apps I have promoted so far, including Buff, list on their website what their monetization model is and what happens to your data. I tested running Apex with and without buff in the background and could see no change in FPS or perceptible input lag. As far as I can tell, there are no downsides. You download buff for free, you play the game, earn buff points and exchange those for game keys, gift cards and even gaming hardware. And they pay for it by showing ads and people signing up for their premium model. You can even participate in challenges to increase the amount of points you earn. Get buff today for free by using my personal link in the description or pinned comment. Thanks so much to Buff for sponsoring today's video. Let's investigate if movement was shadow nerfed. You might have heard of a modded version of Apex called R5 Reloaded. That's what I'm going to compare against. For this video I reset all modded game fights back to their original state. This means I'm comparing season 12 movement values versus season 3 movement values. I'm also using macros for my keyboard inputs to guarantee that there's no human error involved. As far as necessary, I'm then using spots in Kings Canyon that have not changed between Season 3 and now. I then push myself into a corner to make sure my starting position is the same and look at the same compass angle before I let the macro take over. Since all this still comes with some teeny tiny variables and I'm comparing Season 3 against Season 12, I'm also going to look at the Season 11 game fights at the end and see if I can find anything that hints at actual movement values being changed. I think that this will give us the most scientific way of getting to the bottom of this. Quick explanation for the position values I'm gonna use throughout this video. You can activate them by putting CL show position 1 into your launch options. We have X, Y and Z or North, South, East, West and Up, Down and then Velocity. I'm not gonna use the angle values. With that out of the way, the first thing I did was to investigate if the fundamental sprint acceleration was changed. For that I tested it with and without auto sprint, on flat ground, uphill and downhill. I can see no difference that is relevant here. On some frames season 3 is ahead, on others it's season 12. Which simply comes down to the recording FPS not 100% matching up with the game reporting back the acceleration values. There is nothing here that would indicate some fundamental change. So on to sliding, the next very fundamental movement mechanic. Here is a very simple long slide as a comparison. Same results, no relevant difference. I then did a test with the slide on a very shallow slope with jumps in between, which result in jump slides that give you an extra boost. And the same story, no relevant difference. What would make a difference to me is if you considered subscribing to the channel. I'm currently pushing for 200,000 subscribers. I then wanted to investigate dead slides, which is when you think you should get the speed boost from a slide jump, but only get the speed from a normal jump, without the boost from a slide. For that I first determined the perfect slide length for a slide jump, which turns out to be 0.23 seconds. Staying in the slide shorter won't give you a slide jump at all, and staying in the slide longer will give you a bit less velocity. So I put it to 0.24 seconds, just to have a bit of buffer. Then I figured out how long you need to sprint in between each slide jump, which is 1.8 seconds. Using these perfect timings, I made a macro which would slide jump 5 times back to back. In modded Apex I could run back and forth 10 times without a single dead slide. But as soon as I got into the fire range of the official game, I started to get dead slides. Very often on the third slide jump and it was even worse in game, where it extended to all other slide jumps. It felt like 1 in 15 slide jumps would result in a dead slide. So I increased the time in between each slide jump to 1.81 seconds 
and the slide length to 0.25 seconds. We are now at 30 milliseconds of timing buffer for each slide jump compared to the perfect timing. In the fire range, this resulted in 10 runs back to back without dead slides. And in game, they got way less frequent, but still happened occasionally. Oh, and did you notice the frame stuttering right before this dead slide? I'm gonna come back to that. This now means to be absolutely safe, we have to add another 10 to maybe even 20 milliseconds of buffer to each slide jump. That's 50 milliseconds more than the theoretical lowest time that worked on modded Apex. You know how sometimes you stop shooting at somebody because you know they will get downed on that exact bullet? That's how exact our timing perception is in shooters. 50 milliseconds is one R99 bullet. If you have played Apex a lot and gotten your slide jump timing very precise, then 50 milliseconds is noticeable. And that's only what I noticed in my testing. In the thousands of games we play, there could be times where a 50 millisecond buffer is not enough. So for now, I can 100% confirm that playing in an online match in Season 12 leads to more dead slides than playing offline in Season 3. I'm pretty sure this has nothing to do with sprinting or sliding being nerfed in the game fights, but solely with how physics and inputs work in a potential laggy online game environment. Next up, jump fatigue. If you jump multiple times back to back, your second and following jumps will be lower than your first jump. If the jump fatigue height was reduced, this would mainly influence how bunny hopping feels and would nerf it as a side effect. Standing still and jumping reveals a first jump height of 55.2 units and each consecutive one between 16.6 and 18.3. I would guess that this doesn't have to do with the number of jumps, but with when I jump. I do use scroll wheel jumping, but there still might be some milliseconds more or less of ground contact, which might reduce the jump fatigue effect, resulting in this two unit spread. In modded Apex, the first jump also hits 55 units and all consecutive jumps hit between 16.3 and 17.4 units. I then did the same test while crouched with the exact same results. So jump fatigue was not changed whatsoever. While we are at jumping, let's investigate if lurches were nerfed. A lurch is a push into a direction of a movement input after a jump and are what fundamentally enable tap spreads. I made another macro and measured at multiple points if the fire range had geometrically changed between the version we have in modded Apex and season 12, which it hadn't. That means I could use the same lineup, let my macro take over and then compare the end positions. And turns out, the end position is different. Within a sample size of 3, the west-east or left-right value changes by 1 within season 12 or within season 3, but in between them it changes by 10, which you can also clearly see if you compare the surrounding geometry. Back and forth doesn't change significantly, but left to right you can see a clear change. And just for proof, here are the starting positions of the lineup. And the vertical value is the exact same on start and ending, so it can't be due to falling shorter. Maybe it has to do with gravity, but an extra test shows no difference in gravity. So something makes for this left to right difference. I don't think it's an actual value change to how lurches work. That change would have to be minuscule. And why would they do that? I think it comes back to how physics or inputs are treated in an offline versus online environment. Now it gets tricky, because the next two big things are if general air strafing and Horizon's air strafe passive were changed in season 12. Air strafing involves mouse movement, which I can't reliably record in my macro software. So I asked around a bit and ended up with mostly fireproof pulling season 3 values for me and Ice Pixel reverse engineering the season 11 game fights for me and to pull season 12 values from the current game. As far as we know, air strafing and the speed you gain from it is made up of two values, air acceleration and air speed. For general air strafing, air speed is 60 and air acceleration is 500. And that is true for season 12, for season 11 and even for season 3. Air strafing was not changed since at least season 3. What about Horizon? Air speed is 80 and air acceleration is 800. For season 11, 
Season 12 and for Season 7 when Horizon was introduced. Unless there is a different value I'm overlooking, nothing about air acceleration has changed since the start of the game, which this comparison by Mavic also seems to confirm. This was recorded with a macro for keyboard inputs and as closely as possible matched mouse movement. The velocity values get very close to each other in Season 3 versus Season 12. Which leaves us with the big question of why do so many people think that movement was shadow nerfed? I think it's two factors. Number one, pure imagination and placebo. Every season we have the same Twitter threads of people being convinced that the R301 shoots faster this season or that Gibby's bubble got so much bigger. If people want to believe that something has changed, they are going to believe that something has changed. And number two, bad server performance. I mentioned in my last video that I get way more no wrecks and frame stuttering this season. I even have the perfect example of a dead slide happening right after some frame stuttering. In Titanfall 2, bad server performance could have a massive impact on how smooth movement felt. And it was even more noticeable there since you were going so much faster. Apex Legends was supposed to be a Titanfall Battle Royale and you can see code fragments of that all over the game files. So I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if bad server performance was again responsible for a change in movement feel. There could still be some shadow nerfs to movement that I missed in my testing, but I'm happy with where this investigation leaves us. So even though there have been instances where Respawn said something was not changed, only to later come out that it absolutely was changed, in this case, I don't think there is a grand movement conspiracy and it's just server bad and people brain bad. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!